a friend of mine messaged me recently and said, hey, can't you get like a rubber filament? Do you think you could 3D print some rubber stamps? I didn't know, but I wanted to find out. So I grabbed some TPU, started to print some tests and well, you can follow along with this video and make some of your own. Oh, and Cura profiles for TPU on the Snapmaker 2 are now available on GitHub. There are two parts to a basic rubber stamp. You've got the stamp itself, which is usually something relatively soft, and then you've got the handle, which isn't. But that meant that my first task was dialing in a Cura profile for TPU on the Snapmaker 2 for the soft bits. TPU is a wonderful filament. Its big selling point is that it's soft and flexible with a fair amount of squish, but its big downfall is that it's soft and flexible with a fair amount of squish. It's a desirable trait from many prints like here with these stamps, but the very nature of TPU can cause issues with certain printers depending on their design. Typically you want to print TPU on a printer that has a direct drive extruder. It's definitely possible to do it on a printer with a Bowden tube, although it's not easy and not really recommended. Fortunately for me, the Snapmaker 2 is a direct drive printer, so that's half the battle won. The other half is that because it's so soft and flexible, you want to print it fairly slowly. Unlike PLA and PETG that are quite stiff, pushing TPU harder doesn't always force it to come out of the hole at the end of the nozzle any faster. Sometimes it just forces it to bunch up behind the nozzle and clog up the extruder. There are things that you can print and modifications you can make for some printers to help prevent this, but for me the easiest solution with the Snapmaker 2 is just not to try and print it too quickly and I've had no problems with TPU clogging so far. The TPU I used here is a roll I bought a while ago and forgot about. I don't use TPU all that often so it's an easy thing to do. I tested it out on one of my i3 printers first because those are already dialed in for TPU but it printed terribly. The filament was obviously very moist so I went over to eBay and finally got a food dehydrator that I modified to fit a couple of rolls of filament. After a few hours of drying there was a decent improvement in quality. So now it was time to put it in the Snapmaker 2. So just for the sake of completeness, this was the first test I did on one of my i3 printers. And this was how I knew that the filament was moist. Because when you look at all that stringing and those bad surface finishes, that should not be happening at all. But here's my first test on the Snapmaker 2. And for this first test, I went with some very conservative settings, similar to those I use with the i3s. And as you can see, it printed very well, except for some layer adhesion issues. <laughs> so I put the filament back in the food dehydrator for a couple of days and just left it alone before trying again. You can see here that I've got a bunch of benches as I played around with the infill, the walls, the top and bottom layers in Cura to see what worked best with TPU on the Snapmaker. And I ended up with this one, which printed quite well. Nice and soft and squishy. It's, I mean, it's, it's got a fair amount of infill but it will bend. It's, it's, it's fairly squishy. After getting this last one, I was pretty confident that, that I got my settings dialed in and it's printing reasonably quickly. It's not as fast as PLA, obviously, but I'm happy enough with the results. So this is the profile that's up on GitHub right now. And if you want to get it, you can head over there and download the profile and install it yourself. And if you want to know how to download and install the profiles on GitHub into Cura, Go ahead and watch the PLA profiles video that I did. I'll link it up there and I'll put it down in the description. So none of the stamps that I wanted to make as test pieces are really all that big and they all have circular logos. So I started by designing the handle. It's round with a 50 millimeter diameter base and I printed this out of PLA. I didn't really take any measurements or think about ergonomics when I designed it. I just loaded up Fusion 360 and modeled something that looked about right. Giant Arms sent me a roll of their silk copper PLA to check out and it seemed to print pretty well. So I decided to use that to print off a few handles. But then it was time to design the actual stamps. This turned out to be a lot more straightforward than I'd expected and I'm going to go through the whole process with you now. The first task is to create or get hold of a copy of whatever it is you want to stamp in a vector format. I wanted to test this out with logos of companies that I liked and gear that I used so I reached out to the folks at Spiffy Gear and they sent me their logo. The Hollyland logo I recreated from scratch based off a JPEG file. Mostly just to experiment with Illustrator. 
and when Insta360 found out about this project, they sent me their logo to try too. And no, none of them are sponsoring this video. Side note, a couple of shots in this video were actually filmed with the new Insta360 GO 2 camera that was just announced today. I posted an unboxing and some sample footage to this channel, shot with that camera, uh, but my full review of the Insta360 GO 2 is over on DIYphotography.net if you want to check that out, link in the description. But you can see I've got the logo loaded up here in Adobe Illustrator. It's pretty clean and there's not much to really do to it, but to make life easier in Fusion 360, I'm going to place the center of the logo in the top left hand corner of the document and then save it out as an SVG. Inside Fusion 360, the first thing to do is make that 50 millimeter circle on a new sketch that matches the base of the handle. And then we can import the logo by choosing Insert SVG from the Insert dropdown on the tools along the top. When you bring an SVG into the Fusion 360, it treats that top left corner of the document as the 0, zero position. So if I have the center of the logo at that point, it gives me a nice central spot to flip, rotate, scale or whatever I want to do. With the logo inside the circle though, creating the stamp is pretty easy. All we have to do is to select the shapes of the logo, hit extrude and tap in minus two millimeters. This puts the logo below the surface and you'll see why this is important in a minute. Then hit extrude again, but this time select the circle and everything inside it and then extrude two millimeters in the positive direction. So now we have our 50 millimeter circle above with the logo pushing out below. That's it. Really, yeah, that's all there is to it. Now we just choose 3D print from the file menu and we can either save it out as an STL or just send it straight to our slicing software. Because we pushed the logo out into negative space when we modeled it, we've essentially flipped it without having to mirror anything. When we bring this into our slicer and put the flat 50 millimeter circle side down on the build plate, everything's oriented and mirrored the way it should be. Inside Cura, I choose a Snapmaker 2 as my printer Pick my TPU profile, and if you want to see how to install Cura profiles, like I said before, check the Snapmaker PLA video. Then slice it, save out the G code, and send it to the printer. Once it's printed, getting TPU off the Snapmaker 2 bed is pretty easy if it's leveled well. It definitely sticks a little stronger than PLA, but with TPU being flexible, it's easy to pull up an edge, grab it, and peel it off the build plate. As we've already established, there are only two components to a stamp, the handle and the stamp itself, so we've printed everything we need. Now we just need to glue them together. And for that, I'm using regular Loctite super glue. The process here is pretty easy, and we're gonna do this one of the Insta360 logo. And all we need to do is put some on the back of there, and then put some on the handle. And then we're just going to smush these together. And I'm just going to push down on there for about 20 or 30 seconds until it sets. But we're not quite finished yet with this. The problem with 3D printing is that this top surface, while it looks flat, it's not really flat. You've got little bumps and depressions because of just the way 3D printing works. So we're going to need to sand this down. and. Yes, you can sand TPU if you're careful about how you do it. And I'm being careful with this 150 grit wet dry sandpaper, although I'm using it dry. You'll want to be quite gentle at first so that it moves smoothly across the sandpaper and doesn't get caught up and dig into the edges. I also like to turn it just about an eighth of a turn in between each stroke. But you can already see that some parts of the surface are starting to get a bit flatter. But eventually you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. And you can just use compressed air or a dry paintbrush to get rid of the dust from the filament we've sanded off. And now all we need to do is grab one of our ink pads and start stamping away. These pads are, <laughs> these pads are ones I picked up quite cheaply on uh, Amazon and they're not very good. You have to squish it down a whole lot, a bunch of times to get it to really load up on the stamp. But eventually they do work. So then if we do that, there we go. And I still haven't quite sanded it enough, <laughs> but it works quite well. When you do sand them properly, you can get some really great effective looks like this one from the folks at Spiffy Gear. But if we look at this one from the Holy Land logo and we 
can load this one up with ink and that goes that way up and that's it that's all there is to 3d printing your own rubber stamps now you can go make your own and go stamp stamp stamping all over the place this isn't the only way to make a rubber stamp, but it's an easy one if you have a 3D printer. If you end up making one with this method, let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more, and ring the bell so that you're notified when new videos go live. The TPU profiles, as I've mentioned a couple of times, have been added to the GitHub for the Snapmaker 2 Cura profiles, so be sure to check those out if you have a Snapmaker 2, so you can start printing these or whatever else you want out of TPU. If you have any questions about this process or the profiles, drop them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.